All right, folks, welcome to another episode of Ape Answers, the amateur radio show where we answer your questions. In today's episode, episode number 12, we're going to talk a little bit about how we use math to size antennas. Let's take a look at the question. Our question comes from Flynn Faraday, 1821, and he asked, where does the 468 come from? And I responded, the number 468 in the dipole antenna length formula is a constant that comes from a combination of the speed of light and adjustments for other factors like wire thickness, end effects, and the velocity factor of the antenna. Let's go ahead and take a little bit of a deeper look and explain this further. In amateur radio, antenna size is one of the most important factors influencing performance. A properly sized antenna ensures efficient radiation and reception of signals, providing better range and clarity. This slide introduces why antenna sizing is so important, particularly emphasizing the connection between frequency and wavelength. Higher frequencies result in shorter antennas because the wavelength is inversely related to frequency. However, real-world factors such as the velocity factor of materials com complicate this calculation. These adjustments will be covered in subsequent slides, ensuring that you gain a comprehensive understanding of practical antenna design. We start off by calculating the length of an antenna in free space. We use the simple formula length, or L, equals 300 divided by F, or frequency, where L is the antenna length in meters and F is the frequency in megahertz. This calculation is derived using the speed of light, which travels at 300,000 kilometers per second. It's a quick and efficient way to determine the ideal antenna size for different frequencies. As an example, for a 14 megahertz signal, 20 meter band, its calculated antenna length would be approximately 21.43 meters. This formula serves as the foundation for further adjustments in real world conditions, which we will discuss now. When designing antennas in real world environments, adjustments to the free space calculations are necessary to account for environmental effects. For instance, the proximity of structures, the height of the antenna, and ground effects can influence its resonance and overall performance. As a result, antennas are often shorted by 5 to 10 percent from their free space size to function correctly. In our earlier example of a 14 megahertz frequency, the initial length of 21.43 meters would need to be reduced by this percentage, bringing the final length somewhere between 19.29 and 20.36 meters. This is an essential step to ensure optimal performance in practical conditions. Now we're going to be talking about dipole antennas in this video, but most of this information is applicable to other antenna types. A dipole antenna is one of the simplest, most effective antennas used in amateur radio. Its two equal length legs resonate at specific frequency, making it an ideal choice for amateur radio operations. Understanding the resonance is crucial. When the antenna length matches the frequency's wavelength, the antenna operates at a maximum of efficiency. Dipoles are often used on high frequency HF bands, making them popular for amateur radio operators. The number 468 isn't arbitrary or random. It's derived from a theoretical wavelength calculation specifically for a half-wave antenna. Initially, the number 492 was used in early calculations based on ideal conditions. However, real-world effects such as end effects, wire thickness, and velocity factor, where waves travel slightly slower in wire than in free space, required refinement. Through empirical adjustments, 468 became the standard. This ensures that the antenna length will resonate correctly at the desired frequency, optimizing signal performance. To calculate the length of each leg of the dipole, simply divide the total length by two. This is important because the dipole consists of two equal length elements, each responsible for radiating half of the signal. For instance, in our example using a resonant frequency of 14.074 MHz, 20 meter FT8, the total dipole length was 33.26 feet. Dividing this by two, we find that each leg should be approximately 16.63 feet. Symmetry between the legs ensures the antenna performs correctly and has a balanced radiation pattern. The velocity factor, VF, is an important consideration when calculating the length of a dipole antenna, especially if you're using insulated wire or if the antenna is close to ground. 
The velocity factor accounts for the fact that the signal travels more slowly through wire than they do in free space. For most insulated wires, the velocity factor is typically between 0.8 and 0.95, or 80 and 95% of what you would get in free space. To adjust for this, you multiply the initial free space length by the velocity factor. For example, if we calculated a dipole length of 33.26 feet with a velocity factor of 0.95, the adjusted length would be 31.60 feet, meaning each leg would measure 15.8 feet. In addition to calculating the length and adjusting for the velocity factor, there are a few other key factors to consider when constructing a dipole antenna. First, thicker wires and end effects, the way current behaves near the end of the antenna, can slightly shorten the resonant length. So it's always a good idea to cut your wire slightly longer and trim as needed. This leads to our next step, testing and tuning. Use an SWR meter or an antenna analyzer. You can actually find your resonant frequency of your antenna and make adjustments. Lastly, antenna height plays a significant role in performance. Generally, the higher the antenna, the better performance, particularly for HF bands. Now for a dipole antenna, the rule of thumb is to get it one half of a wavelength above ground. Let's walk through an example calculation of the length of a dipole antenna for resonant frequency of 14.74 megahertz. First, we apply the formula length or L equals 468 divided by F, which gives us a total length of 33.26 feet. Then, since a dipole consists of two equal legs, we divide that number by two, resulting in each leg being about 16.63 feet. If you're using insulated wire with a velocity factor of 0.95 or 95%, the total length is adjusted to 31.6 feet, meaning each leg would measure 15 feet. This process ensures the antenna is properly tuned for the specific frequency and the material used. So to wrap things up, the key to accurate dipole antenna calculations is understanding the adjustments made to constants like 468 and when to apply them. The adjustment from 492 to 468 accounts for average conditions including the velocity factor and real-world factors. When you adjust further using specific velocity factor, you're refining the calculation to suit your material, ensuring that the antenna resonates at the correct frequency. The best practice, from my perspective, is going to be to use 468. Cut your antenna a little bit long and then adjust from there. I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below. And just remember, your questions might show up on a new episode of Ape Answers. Thanks for watching, everybody.